Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Benita of Benita Doodles and today I'm going to show you how you can draw this beautiful flower here. With just markers. The whole thing's done in alcohol markers. In this particular tutorial I use Spectrum Noir as they are my favourite brand. But you can use any markers that are the colour equivalent. I will go through all the colours that I've used and the process that I did it in so you can replicate your own picture using alcohol markers. So I decided to time lapse the video as in total it was just over an hour long and I wanted to keep it at a size or a length that you would be quite happy to sit and watch and listen while I talk you through the tutorial. To begin with I started swatching everything that I needed to do. I had the reference picture in front of me which I've put on the video for you here because I needed to get a rough idea of the colours that I needed. I had all my pens to me to one side and I just pretty much checked my eye, looked at the colours that were in my pot and picked out the closest I could find to it. I knew that I would needed a combination of colours and I knew that it would be maybe two or three of each tone. Uh, it turned out it needed to be about three or four and because I wanted to get it as realistic as possible. Now the colours that we have gone for are the Canary mango bright orange true blue dark blue true black cocktail or cocktail pink flame red old lavender vintage blue avocado burgundy fox green and salad and lastly regal so I've listed them all up for you so you can pause the video at any time and go back and have a look at the colours. I tested a few out that I thought may be close to it but they weren't, they were useless so I've put an X through them. So don't confuse yourself with what you are reading on the bit of paper in front of you. Just stick with the colours that I have listed in the um, information section and the list that I've put up on the video for you here. It's always worth swatching your work because if you just go into it blindly and pick up a pen thinking that that is your closest you're going to get, you can be very, very wrong sometimes and it can come out really quite awful. Swatching also means that you can put the project down at any time and come back to it and if you're not able to keep your pens to one side, at least you know what colours you have used. I have gone in straight away the canary and I have filled out all the yellow petals all the way down whether or not it should be dark there. All that I've done is left the lightest areas either white or I believe that I just left it yellow because that's pretty much what the lightest area was. I've gone all the way down the main petals and just filled it in with this colour because once we've got some colour down it then makes the blending of the dark and the medium tones a lot easier as you've already got some alcohol down on the paper. Now blending is generally easier when your paper is still slightly wet which you'll see as we go through the tutorial um, but it is once you get the hang of it, it it can actually be very easy to start blending it in. Now the orange was our mid-tone or the bright orange apologies so the bright orange was our mid-tone and I left negative space where there still needed to be yellow shown. What I mean by negative space is just literally leaving that area with no other colour in it. So if I put the base tone down of the yellow, I haven't done anything over the top. I then use the canary yellow to blend over the whole thing, which then the alcohol on top softens the two colours together so you're not left with really, really harsh lines. And that's the important thing about blending with alcohol pens. You really need to be fairly quick with how you start to apply your colour over the top because you need that blending to be as smooth as possible and the way to do that is to get the alcohol blending over the top. I ended up using the flame red as the darkest areas and went back a bit later with the burgundy and made it even darker but again pop a little bit in the area that you want and get it blended out. When you want to blend your darks into your mid-tones, 
put your dark down blend over with your mid-tone color if you want your mid-tone into your lights put your mid-tone down and you blend with your light color don't try and blend over with your mid-tones or your darks because you'll just make the pigment stronger and you'll essentially be going backwards with your drawing I've come in here with the blender pen never dismiss your blender pen it's a pen which is pretty much full of pure um, alcohol marker alcohol marker marker alcohol <laughs> and you can use it really really effectively to create natural highlights without having to panic about getting them in afterwards with a white pen or a white pencil the alcohol blending pencils do pretty much that the alcohol disperses the pigment in the paper so you're left with a much more natural looking highlight and it's a really really good way of removing some color where you don't want it or if you just want to create some of those highlights highlights seems to be my favorite word of the video Again, I'm just going over with the canary uh, to blend it all together. You can use your canary to go over your dark and your mid-tones at the same time because you know that you're not going to affect the yellow underneath it. All you're doing is blending it and making it much more even. Now we need to just say that actually one of the most important things on doing any tutorial or any picture if you're trying to achieve realism is making sure that you're looking at your reference more than you're actually looking at your work because if you don't keep if you are one of those people that look more at what they're doing rather than what they're drawing you'll find that you'll miss things and shadows are going the wrong place and you start to draw from what your memory thinks something should look like the thing about realism is that you have to draw what you see not what you think should be there or not what you think a shadow should look like or a highlight should be you need to be looking at your reference so often if you've watched me do a live you have seen my head literally go from left to right left to right left to right because all I'm doing is going from my reference to my image that I'm drawing we're going to keep going over with the petals we're going to keep adding the dark tones in when we need it the joy of alcohol pens is that you layer on top of each other you can make your markers darker it does get to a point when you cannot saturate your paper anymore with color when you then would lead to look at bringing in a darker tone if needed you'll find actually later on when i come and do the blue section i actually bring in the regal which wasn't on my original plan but the regal is actually a really good way of going over the dark blue to make a really really deep tone without changing the tone of the blue so I use the colors that I had to hand so if you need to mix more than one color to achieve a deeper tone that is not a problem just test it out beforehand make sure that you are happy with the outcome before you decide to move forward onto your drawing so the main petals on the top the yellow ones are pretty much done now the blue parts are done with the true blue on the base the dark blue I originally had to do all the dark, dark tones but felt I can get it dark enough I also used the blender pen to try and pick out some highlights and on the very very tip is where I use the old lavender here we go so I'm bringing in the regal now just to try and add a bit more depth try and add a bit more shadow because I didn't feel that the contrast was rich enough and you need a really strong contrast in your images if again you are trying to achieve a realism look I don't know what your color equivalent equivalents I can't talk today I don't know what your color equivalents are like in the pens that you have but if you look up these particular colors in the spectrum noir series you may be able to just do a rough color match to what you have available we're starting on the main trunk of the flower I don't actually know what it's called um, and I colored pretty much all the front half in the salad and the salad is the lightest of the green and now I needed to do an awful lot of blending to get the effect and the translucency that was required when you came up towards that middle section so old lavender is what we have in the middle section and I use a mixture of the cocktail pink and the flame red to get the red 
uh, sharp lines down the side and across the top. Vintage blue also comes into play because I needed a really, really mottled, um, it was really hard to describe, but I, I felt it was a really good way of getting the translucency in there. I'm using the forest green and the avocado to also mix the, the colours and get all the blending together. Again, if you want to, just keep blending over the top with the colours that you've been using underneath. So when I wanted those lines softened that you can see down there, I then went over again with the old lavender because we didn't want to change the tone of the markers that were underneath. A bit like colouring pencils, markers require layering it, depending on the style that you, you go for, you can't just plonk a colour down and that be it. You have to blend and you have to layer and you have to mix and you have to get tonal values in there. And it really is worth just practising on some simple subjects if the medium is very new to you. Um, if you are not new to them but you feel that your art needs to take that step further really have a go at blending because it makes a massive massive difference underneath i used a little bit of the true black and i used the burgundy as well to try and make that shadow underneath because again we wanted it strong we wanted a strong contrast at the end of it i'd like it to look like it's a photo so we're just adding a bit more detail a bit more depth to those ridges that we have on the leaf section of the flower we need to just keep blending them in so again we go over with previous tones that we've used and I use a motion in the direction of those lines that are going because it just helps with the realism effect. I did go in again with the blender pencil just to bring up some highlights to make it a bit more natural and um, yeah all in all it just worked really really well. We're going to move on to the main stem section in a moment and again using the same colours so it was a salad for the base the fox green and the avocado and you'll find that on the leaf on the left was actually quite a tricky one but I found quite a good technique of getting the lines in there without having to go back and panic about adding them in afterwards and again it is all down to leaving negative space Keep going with the blending if you find that some areas were a bit rough I found that the black was actually because it's a true black it's an extremely dark black that I just wanted to go over and blend it a bit more out with the darkest of the green so it had much more of a natural transition so the fox green was the left hand side of the leaf and the salad was the right side of the leaf so that's the main two that we've been using and again the the avocado Can you see how I left the negative space there? I drew the lines in by leaving negative space and that's the easiest way I find to add highlights when using markers. Blending over with the vintage blue really made a difference here to keep it all very tonally in keeping with the rest of the flower. So it was definitely worth doing and I'm glad I did it. Uh, so it did take a little bit of fiddling to get this how I wanted it to look and the shape wasn't quite right so I had to alter that as well. But there I was again using the blender pen. If you want to make those highlights stronger, again the blender pen is just fantastic for it. So don't dismiss yours if you have one. If you don't have one, I believe you can make your own by getting an old pencil and soaking it in rubbing alcohol i might be wrong i shall have to have an experiment actually and do one for myself and see what happens so we're almost at the end of the tutorial please do come and find me in the group and it'd be lovely to see what you do with these um, i mean if you've got any questions at all pop them in the comments in the comment section down below and i'd be more than happy to answer what i can if you enjoyed the video of course hit that like button and pop the subscribe button and also hit that bell and then that way you know when the next tutorial is available for you to try. I hope you enjoyed this video and I shall see you on the next one.
well there you have it hopefully you enjoyed that tutorial and let me know how you get on i'd love to see the images that you are able to replicate using your particular markers of choice and you know you're more than welcome to come and find me in my facebook group benita doodles art share i will link it down below for you so come and find us and join the community it's not just about drawing it's about all types of art and crafting things and anything that you love to do in your spare time so come and find us give us a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell button if you decide that you want to get notifications of when my next video is up